So at one of Japan's biggest airports, there was a turtle that left a nearby pond and made its way onto the airstrip, trying to cross it like turtles like to do with roads. But it did end up delaying five commercial flights. Now I'm honestly surprised that they stopped everything for the turtle, because I wouldn't expect a turtle to cause damage to a plane, but then again, I guess you don't want to take the risk. Or maybe they just really care about the turtle, which I'm not complaining. I'm just I'm pleasantly surprised by that. They relocated it away from the airport and the planes ultimately nothing was canceled, but technically it did delay five flights, which probably affected hundreds of people in at least small ways. Catching the turtle was not very hard. I, uh, turtles, I think, are a lot quicker than most people think because so many people are used to them being linked as the slowest animal ever, but they can be quick when they want to. Not so quick to where it was hard to relocate it, it just took a staff member with a net and the turtle was gone and the planes could continue, but they had to re-clear the entire runway after spotting the turtle, which is what actually caused the delay. But then I just ended up researching planes and animals and I found the FAA, which is the United States Aviation Administration, and they have an entire database dedicated to wildlife strikes where an animal and a plane collide. It is a voluntary database, so it definitely doesn't have everything, but then I got exploring. Of course, I checked the reptiles first. About three to five snakes get run over a year in the database, which isn't too surprising. They oftentimes, like turtles, will slither their way across and just end up in harm's way, which is sad, but it happens. And three to five isn't too bad. Again, this is voluntary, but uh, when it comes to turtles, there are actually 10 to 20 turtles a year in the United States that end up getting hit by planes. I assume in the same way where they're trying to cross the street. Well, the cross the runway. I think the most surprising species I found on the list were microbats, and even more surprising was how many. Over 1,300 reports of microbats coming in contact with people's aircrafts. They are so small, it's literally in their name. How do you know you hit a microbat? I truly don't like, if, you, if there's any aviation enthusiasts watching, please enlighten me. How do you know you hit a microbat? in your plane that's like 100 feet long. There's never been a case of a microbat actually causing damage to a plane. And then on the other side of the spectrum are the larger birds, notably the bald eagle, uh, America's bird, our icon, our status. <laughs> in the past three years, over 100 bald eagles have been killed by aircraft in the United States. And that's of course just the reported ones. But I feel like if you hit a bald eagle, you'd probably be pretty inclined to report it. But then again, you might not want to report it because you're so ashamed that you hit a bald eagle in the United States with your airplane or your drone. But that's like one bald eagle a week. It's, okay, it's not one a week, but I didn't feel like doing the math. It's like, it's a lot of bald eagles. But in July of 2020, a bald eagle actually destroyed a government drone. Now, I don't know if this is a drone like a DJI that the government was like flying around the White House just for fun, or if this was like an actual like airplane drone that's gonna be shot out into the Middle East or something. Either way, interesting. Take it as you will. Maybe a, pop is it a surveillance drone. Did the bald eagle just sacrifice itself for the people or was the drone useful? I, I have no idea. There's really not that much information. But another bald eagle actually destroyed a government aircraft, a full-on airplane. The government marked this aircraft as destroyed by the bald eagle colliding with it. Another one destroyed a Cessna 172 which is an almost one ton airplane. So at least we have an idea of what a bald eagle is capable of. I guess if you if you are born in what you consider the wrong generation, because you cannot go bald eagle hunting, I guess just get your pilot's license and you're set. Imagine if a bald eagle like took down Air Force One. White-tailed deer are the most destructive animal I can find on this list. Uh, they've destroyed just dozens of planes. It's like throughout the year, they're constantly, and it's not too surprising because if you're landing a plane, a deer does the classic runs at the very last moment across the airstrip because they can definitely scale some pretty high fences and make their way through. So it's not too surprising that deer have basically totaled a lot of planes. I don't know if totaled is a thing in planes. I, I did a good bit of research for this, enough to make the video interesting, but I don't know that much about planes. One cow destroyed an air commander, which is not surprising. It's a cow, it's massive, no. but I just don't understand how a cow ended up near the plane. And the most expensive aircraft I could find that was destroyed was a Douglas A4 Skyhawk, which is about 900,000 US dollars and it was destroyed by an unknown bird species. Three helicopters were also destroyed respectively with a vulture, a hawk, 
and the snow goose. <laughs> of course, in a perfect world, animals and planes would never collide, but I would argue that it's nowhere near an epidemic and compared to all of the other roadkill and stuff, this is pretty good. It seems like the safety is quite high. I personally do have a pretty big fear of flying and I am always scared of an animal coming in contact, but it looks like people really do know what they're doing. And the turtle in Japan kind of feels like a good example to me personally to help alleviate my stress because I do forget just how many safety measures are put in place with this kind of thing. In regards to roadkill, of course, there's way more cars and vehicles totaled, but it's also a bit easier to get a driver's license than a pilot's license, I hear. I have sadly had some collisions that I could not avoid in my vehicle. It's only been a couple, but it still really sucks. There was actually a duck uh, coming across the road. It was really early in the morning, like 5 a.m., so it was still a bit dark. And right as the ducks were waking up, one flew into the road. And although my brakes are, are still good, it, they were not good enough to stop in time. And I actually brought the duck with me. I turned around, I was able to get it, and it was still alive. And so I brought it inside, and I was trying to find anyone near me that was willing to help a wild duck, because Sure, I've done some stuff with reptiles, but I had no idea where to begin here. And not a single place within a drivable distance actually took in wild birds, which was surprising. I remember when I was younger, I actually did bring a dove that was hit by a car by someone else to a rehab facility. And that facility ended up shutting down because of lack of funds. So I guess it's, I mean, it's just a part of the living experiences. But I, I was pretty surprised. I think the same way a lot of people are like, I need to rehome my reptile, where do I do it? And they can find literally no one, so they all just come to Emerald Scales and myself. Um, I, I guess that's the case with a lot of different animals and a lot of different really sucky situations. But I thought it was interesting. I wanted to try a new format, but if you like the format, then don't smash anything. Don't smash your car into animals. Don't smash your planes into animals. Don't splash your cars into planes. But that's, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. <laughs>